God bless you. Amen. Please invite someone to join us at this time. Invite someone to join us. This very evening is going to be a blessing. So invite someone. Invite someone to join us, amen. Share with someone, invite somebody that you care about tonight because it is going to be a blessing to you. And um, I want you to share with someone to join us tonight, amen. Share with someone to join us tonight, amen. On Tuesday, I was praying and the scripture came to me something that Solomon said in the Bible he said money answers or money answers all things and in another place he said that wisdom is a defense as money is a different a defense or wisdom is protection as money is protection that was Tuesday on Thursday I was praying and the Holy Spirit began to speak to me and the reality came upon me that I don't have money that all I have is prayer and you can only spend what you have. Solomon said that money answers all things, if that is what you have. But prayer does answer all things, if that is what you possess. And in the course of this prayers it began to dawn on me on Friday that if all I have is prayer then I have to spend it all until I get what I want I want you to invite someone tonight because tonight I want to be a blessing of an impartation to you tonight. So invite someone to join us. Invite someone to join us at this moment. Invite someone to join us. Kababa sata kaya labros. Sende yala dios kati anda yala brosi karabara dosi karabara Listen. Some of us, we do not have the money to spend, but we have the prayer to spend. Some of us cannot afford what we want, but we can afford prayer.
And sometimes you got to recognize that if all you got is prayer, then you got to stay on your knees until what you are looking for is paid for. If it has to take three hours, eight hours, 12 hours, if that is all you have, listen, prayer is a currency in the spirit. It is a currency in the spirit. Some of us, our means of transaction is to pray. Because when we pray, God moves things. God pays when we pray. In other words, it pays to pray. It pays to pray. Prayer is a price. It has a price tag. Not everyone can afford prayer. Because it is not easy to pray. It is costly to pray. The anointing is expensive. That is why the devotion to prayer is lacking. See, there, there are some people who think that we pray because we have nothing to do. It may be true, but on the contrary, we pray because that is all we got. Not because we have nothing to do. And if I'm to be honest with you, Sometimes we pray not because we want to pray, but we pray because it pays to pray. We pray because it is the only way to pay for what we want. There are some things in life that the mighty dollar or the Almighty Pan Sterling cannot afford to pay for. Jacob was told that his brother wants to kill him. At that time, Jacob was rich. He was loaded with money. But you know something? He did not pay money for his freedom. The Bible says he left his family where his family was, separated his, himself from his family and went up on the mountain and the Bible said he prayed. Because there are some things your currency cannot afford it. There are some things see the pounds is valuable than the dollar in the exchange rate it is heavier and there are varieties of currencies and prayer is a currency prayer is a currency until you understand it you will not spend in prayer say this to you again until you understand that prayer is a currency you will not spend in praying because when you are praying you are spending it is a currency it is a heavy currency the exchange rate is above the dollar or the pounds Jacob could not pay his brother gold or silver he had to use prayer to pay for his freedom. So he went to the mountain and the Bible says he spent all night praying. Listen, Jacob did not go to pray because he was good in prayer. Jacob did not go up there to pray because he was skillful in prayer. Jacob did not spend all night praying 
because he wanted to pray. Listen, we do not always pray because we want to pray. Jacob did not spend all night. Who doesn't want a good sleep? Who doesn't love their bed? Who doesn't love to watch their TV? Jacob did not spend all night praying because he felt like it or because he wanted to. No, he did not spend all night praying because he can afford prayer. He spent all night praying because prayer is the only thing that can pay the price for his deliverance. It was the only choice. It was the only, it was the only alternative he had in his circumstance. So when we are praying and spending three hours, eight hours, all night praying, it's not because we enjoy prayer. It is not because we want to spend all night praying. Listen, it hurts to pray all night. It is painful to travel for eight hours. It is not easy. But when what you are looking for, only prayer can afford it, then you got to spend to pray. You got to spend to pray. It is not the money that answers, but it is prayer. In most cases, money cannot answer what you want. It can give you what you want. It is prayer. There is a sickness that your money cannot cure. There is a marital problem that your money cannot kill. There is a situation in your house that your money cannot kill, cannot solve it. There are things your children are going through that your money cannot help it. The exchange value of money cannot afford certain things. No matter how much of it you have, it cannot pay the price. There are some things that it takes prayer. It takes prayer to pay the price. It takes prayer to pay the price. And if we must stay on our knees because it takes prayer, then let us stay on our knees. Some people will not understand. But I want you to understand this today that what we are looking for, if it is prayer, that it will take to pay for it, then let us spend time and pay for it in prayer. I was thinking about this as the Spirit of God was dealing with me on Thursday and Friday. And today, the Holy Spirit started talking to me again about the same time. About the same time. That what you want, you can only spend prayer. You can't spend money. You can't spend money. What you want, you can only afford it by prayer. You cannot afford it by money. So I went. Today as I was preparing to be with you, the Holy Spirit began to speak to me about Acts chapter 3. And I want us to turn there and we're going to pray. Invite someone to come and join us tonight. Invite someone. Tonight I want to impart a blessing to you. Acts chapter number 3. I want to impart a blessing to you that no amount of money can afford it. No amount of money can do it for you. Can do it for you. Acts chapter 3, verse number 1. The Bible says, in the New King James Version, Now Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour, and a certain man, lamed, crippled, from his mother's womb was carried whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple 
which is called beautiful. To ask arms from those who entered the temple. The verse number three. And the man seen Peter and John about to go into the temple asked for money. And fixing his eyes on them with John, Peter said, let me go back there again. And the man fixed his eyes, sorry, and fixing his eyes on him with John, Peter said, look at us, Peter said. So the man gave his attention to them expecting to receive something from them expecting to receive money from them the verse number six then peter said silver and gold i do not have but what i have i give you silver and gold i do not have i don't have money but what i have is prayer and I'm going to give that to you today. And Peter said, silver and gold I do not have, but what I have I give you. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up and immediately his feet and ankle bones receive strength. So he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered the temple with them, walking, leaping, and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. Then they knew it was he who sat begging for money at the beautiful gate of the temple and they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him listen to me carefully peter and john the bible says they went to the temple at the ninth hour it was the hour of prayer and the bible says that was what they had they possessed prayer Prayer was their treasure. Prayer was their currency. They invested their life in prayer. I studied the book of Acts. And every time, every time the Bible mentioned the apostles, either they were on their way going to the temple to pray, or they were coming from the church from prayer either they were going to the temple to pray or they had left the temple after prayer every time you met them in the book of acts they were invested in prayer so they had nothing to offer anyone but that which they had which is prayer the bible says peter and john we're going to the temple to pray. The temple has 12 gates. One of the gates is called, one of the gates is called the beautiful gate. It is beautiful. But a man sat at that gate and the Bible says he was begging for arms. He was begging for money at the beautiful gate. Life may be Life may be beautiful for certain people, but it is not beautiful for everyone. He sat at a beautiful gate, but he did not experience a beautiful life. And the Bible says, Peter and John were going into the temple, and the man begged them, requested, asked them for money. Said, give me money. And the Bible says, Peter looked at John and they stopped and he looked at the man and he said unto the man he said look at us 
look at us? Do we look like someone who has money? Church, we are not. I am not Bill Gates. I am not Warren Buffett. I am not Elon Musk. They said, look at us. You are asking us for money. Do we look like someone who has money? And he said unto him, silver and gold, which was the currency. He said, silver and gold, I do not have. I cannot give you money. But what I have, I will give to you. Listen to me. Some of us, we don't have money. And we are not ashamed to say we don't have money. Because we have something greater than what money can afford. There is no amount of money that can cause this man to walk. Money can feed him. Money can clothe him. But he will still be crippled. The Bible said he was crippled from his mother's womb. And Peter said, silver and gold we do not have. But such as we have, we give to you today. Such as we have, we give to you. What we have is prayer. And we shall pray for you. We shall pray to change your circumstance. So that you will not sit here. And your life will be ugly at a beautiful gate. You will not sit here and reduce your life. And beg people for what to eat. We will cause you to walk today. Because what we possess is prayer. And the Bible said, they prayed for him. Said, in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. And the Bible said, and immediately the man stood up. And the Bible said, he began to leap. And he began to walk. And joy filled his life. And he walked for the first time into the beautiful gate. His life changed and became beautiful. He has sat at that gate from the day he was born, crippled, but he has never entered into it. But prayer caused him to enter the beautiful gate. Today, it is my prayer that you will enter your beautiful gate. It is my prayer that what money cannot afford in your life tonight, prayer will pay for it. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I command that from hence that you enter your gate called beautiful. In the name of Jesus Christ. You have been cheated in life today. May you enter your beautiful gate. You have depended on people who have entered the gate called beautiful. But today, you will walk into the beautiful gate in the name of Jesus Christ. Wherever you are, we are praying tonight. And I want to pray for you before we take the communion today. I don't know what you are going through, but I do not have the money to pay for it and to give you that amount but i have something that money cannot afford i have something that the money cannot do it for you today i pray for you in the name of jesus christ anything that has subdued your life to release your life anything which has paralyzed your life that you are not able to enjoy the beautiful things in your life I command it to release it. Today, let your feet, your legs, your limbs be strengthened in the name of Jesus Christ. Today, I strengthen your feeble knees that you shall rise. That today, you shall enter your beautiful gate in the name of Jesus Christ. Anything that is holding you back, that you are stagnant in your life. In your career, in your destiny, in your finances, in your relationship, whatever has made you stagnant today, rise up and walk into your beautiful gate. In the name of Jesus Christ, I say tonight, rise up and walk into your beautiful gate. In the name of Jesus Christ, may the Lord lift you up tonight. I said, may the Lord lift you up tonight. 
May Jehovah give you a testimony. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare that tonight, what shall happen to you shall be a wonder, shall be an amazement, a testimony that will shock the people that you know. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare that those that doubted you shall celebrate with you. They shall celebrate with you. I pray for you today. I say they will celebrate with you. Those that mock you, those that laugh at you, those that offended you, I declare they will celebrate with you. I declare tonight the Lord Jehovah will prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies in the name of Jesus Christ. I declare and pray for you tonight that the positions will change in your favor. Power will change in your favor in the name of Jesus Christ. I declare tonight what is lacking in your life, Jehovah will give to you. I say Jehovah will provide. I say Jehovah will provide. I say Jehovah will provide for you in the name of Jesus. Prayer can afford to pay for it. Whatever you are going through tonight, prayer can afford to pay for it. Whatever it is. Whatever it is tonight, I pray for you tonight. I pray for you tonight in the name of Jesus Christ that what doctors could not do, what money could not do, what friends could not do, I pray for you tonight. May heaven lift you up. May heaven lift you up. May heaven lift you up into your beautiful gate. Into your beautiful gate. In the name of Jesus. Karabo sita karaba. Libros kadaya labro sita kagalaba. Listen, I was looking for something and I was worried. And God said to me, He said, Son, you don't have the money, but you have prayer. And prayer can afford it. Prayer can afford it. I want to tell someone tonight, some of us, all we possess is prayer. Yesterday I was driving to church and the Holy Spirit was speaking to me and said, what you have, you do not have it because of your money. You have it because of your prayer. When I look at myself, I was just right there on the 187 about to make the turn into the church and I immediately examined myself and I looked at everything and whatever I had and I said to myself I could not have gotten these things without prayer Paul said what have you that you did not receive and if you receive it from God why are you acting as though you did not receive it Paul said I am who I am by the grace of God child of God I don't know about you but I am who I am by the grace of God by prayer I became who I am and people will not understand it but I want you to know that our next level and our next upliftment I want you to know where we want to go it will take another step of prayer so I pray for you tonight in the name of Jesus Christ, may your legs receive strength. I say, may your feeble legs receive strength where you have come to and you are restless. You are tired. You are fed up. You want to give up. You are disappointed in your life. I pray for you tonight. You shall enter your beautiful gate. You shall enter your beautiful gate in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, then they knew it was he who sat begging arms at the beautiful gate. The Bible says, and all the people, and all the people saw him walking and praising God. The doubters, the naysayers, the liars, the gossipers. The mockers, the Bible says, and all the people saw him walking 
and praising God. And the Bible said, they knew, they knew, they remembered it was the same man that sat down at the beautiful gate begging for money. And the Bible says, they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. God will surprise them. God will shock them. I pray for you tonight. I say God will surprise you. I say God will surprise those around you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Those that doubted you. Those that spoke against you. I say God will surprise them. God will amaze them. Jehovah will shock them. In the name of Jesus Christ. This is not your end. The Bible said they said. This is the man. They knew him. They knew him. The man that sat and begged. They knew him. God will shock them in your life in the name of Jesus. Psalm number 126, the Bible says, When the Lord tamed the captivity of Zion, the Bible says, We were as they that dreamt. When the Lord tamed our captivity, the Bible says, it looked like a dream. Then the Bible says, and then said, they among the hidden, those that oppose us and doubted us. The Bible says, and then said they, the Lord has done great things for them. I pray for you. I declare in this season of prayer, you shall walk in miracles. This is not your end. You shall walk in miracles. I say you shall walk in miracles. In this season of prayer, you shall walk in miracles. In the name of Jesus Christ. May the Lord bless you, child of God. I say may the Lord bless you. I say may Jehovah bless you tonight. May the Lord bless you tonight, child of God. May he bless you tonight. May he bless you tonight. May Jehovah bless you tonight. I said, may he bless you tonight. May he fill your plate tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. Please, I want us to take communion. So take your communion with you. If you don't have any of these communion kits, just take any bread and any juice that you have in your house. It can be grape juice, cranberry juice. If you don't have that, just take bread, crackers, and water. And let's pray today. I want you to know this tonight. I want you to know this tonight. The Bible says, and immediately the man stood up. What money could not do, prayer did immediately. What God has done for you today, no money can afford it. In the name of Jesus Christ. What Jehovah has stepped in and done for you. I said, no money can afford it. In that marriage, no money can do it. It is only Jehovah, and he has done it today. I said, he has done it today. I said, he has done it today. I said, he has done it today at that house where you can pay that rent. I said, today, Jehovah has stepped in. Jehovah has stepped in for you in the name of Jesus. Take the bread. Let's share prayer tonight. Tonight, your life will never be the same. Why? Because we paid for it tonight with prayer. We paid for it with prayer tonight. Your life tonight will never be the same again. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hebrews chapter number 9. Take anything you have for communion. And we're going to pray. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus Christ. I will never stop praying. And I will never get tired of praying. My God, when you have money, you don't get tired spending it. A prayer is my money. I can't get tired spending it. Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9. Verse 15. And we are taking the communion on this. I want you to understand tonight this communion that we are taking and the reason why we take this communion every day for 40 days when Jesus 
was sealing the new covenant. He took the bread and he took a cup of wine and he blessed it. He blessed it. It was his body and his blood that he used as a signature to the testament. A testament is a covenant or a will. When someone dies, they leave a will. So a testament is the will that Jesus left behind for us. And when someone leaves a will, they leave details inside the will to the beneficiaries. So we are beneficiaries of the will, the covenant, the testament that Christ made with his body and his blood. And every time we take the communion, the body and the blood, every time we take it, we are reaffirming into manifestation that which is in the will, that which is in the covenant. We are calling it, we are provoking it into manifestation. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 15. And for this cause, Jesus, he is the mediator of the new covenant that by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament, which is the old covenant, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. So the Bible says, Jesus made a new covenant, a new will by his death. By means of his death, he made a new covenant so that the Bible says, we, the beneficiaries of this new covenant, may enjoy the promises of the eternal inheritance. So listen to this. Verse 16. For where a testament is, the Bible says, for where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. Where there is a will, if somebody makes a will, you can't enjoy the will until the person that makes the will is dead. So the Bible says, for where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. Jesus has to die or else we can't enjoy the will. You can't make a will and make us the beneficiaries of the will and yet remain alive because whilst you are alive, the will is ineffective. So the verse number 17 says, for a testament is of no force is of no effect after men are dead. No, sorry. It says, for a testament is of force. After men are dead, the will is effective after men are dead. Otherwise, it is of no strength at all. Whilst the testator leave, whereupon neither the first testament was dedicated without blood for for when moses has spoken every precept to all the people according to the law he took the blood of calves and of gold with water and scarlet wood and hyssop and sprinkled both the book and all the people saying this is the blood of the testament which god has enjoined unto you moreover Moreover, he sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry. And the Bible says, And almost all things are by the law purged with blood. And without blood, there is no shedding. There is no remission. I want to stop here. Take your bread tonight. The Bible says, almost all things by the law are perished, they are cleansed by blood. 
and without blood, there is no remission. There is no remission. Jesus sealed the covenant with his body and his blood. He made a will for us. He made a will of inheritance. The Bible calls it the promise of eternal inheritance. He made it on our behalf. But in order for it to be effective, the Bible says he has to die. Because a testament or a will is only effective when the testator is dead. So he has to die. And he has to do it by his blood and by his body. So every time we take this communion, we are calling into force the will, the covenant, the testament. Tonight, as you partake of this bread, I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ that everything you have lost that is applicable in the will, I pray for you, whether it be destiny, whether it be in a sickness, let it be eradicated out of your body. As you partake of this body, the Bible says his body was broken for us today. Jesus was broken. He's, he was killed so that you may live, so that you may have life. I pray for you. You shall not die. Your mother shall not die. Your father shall not die before their time. Your children will not die before their time. It is in the will that Jesus said, I have come to give life and give it more abundantly. This is your inheritance. This is the inheritance of your family. I declare nobody shall die premature in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, as you break this bread, may the effect and the force of the covenant be manifested in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, please break the bread and partake of it. Tonight, please take the cup. Take the cup tonight. Church, there is nothing the blood cannot do. The Bible says, and under the law, there is nothing that is not purged by the blood. There is nothing almost nothing the Bible says that is not purged by the blood. So Moses took blood and the Bible says he cleansed Aaron. He cleansed every minister. Aaron's children. Then the Bible says he took the blood again. He cleansed every utensils. Every utensils. He cleansed every utensils in the tabernacle. Then the Bible says and he took the blood and he anointed the tabernacle as well tonight. As we apply the cup of the blood of the living Christ, the will of the promises of the eternal inheritance is at full force tonight. By the application of the blood tonight over everything that concerns your life, I pray tonight with an immediate force, let there be a dynamic change in your life immediately in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever will not respond tonight, let it respond in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever has ceased in your life today by the application of this I declare that there shall be movement. There shall be movement for you. And they said, in the name of Jesus, they did not call the name of a dead man. But they prayed in the name of he that died and did not remain in the grave. But he rose up 
triumphantly. In the name of that man, Jesus Christ, they called. And I declare by the application of the blood in the name of the living Christ, anything that is dead, that is sabotaged by the devil in your life is released. It's released tonight. It's released tonight. It's released tonight by the full force of the covenant in the name of Jesus Christ. I want you to take this today like Moses applied the blood to everything. Apply this to anything that troubles you. If it is your marriage, your relationship, find a point of contact and apply it. If it is your car, if it is your wallet, your finances, apply it tonight. If it is your own life, there is an organ in your body, something in your body that is messed up and you are trusting God for healing, take it and apply it today to yourself. Wherever you can apply it, apply it today. If you are standing in for your mother, your child who is sick, take their picture, dip your hands in it today and apply it. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Bible says, and almost all things requires the application of the blood. And without the application of the blood, there is no remission. Tonight, we have a superior blood. And as you apply this blood to anything that concerns you, let the blood speak with full force tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you. I pray for you. I pray for you tonight. I pray for you tonight. I pray for you tonight. In the name of Jesus. 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 I pray for you tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. So let it be. And so let it be done. In Jesus name. I call it so and done. I am going to save the rest of my cup. And I'm going to apply some stuff later. Amen. You can do likewise. Or you can drink it if you want to drink it. Whatever that you intend to do is fine. But I want you to know today that prayer has done it for you tonight. Go and give God praise. Go and give God glory. Go and glorify him tonight because prayer has done it for you. God bless you so much. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for praying with us. Tomorrow in person service, 9 a.m., I will be at the church Honeywell Worship Center. We shall lift up prayer again. Paul said, my little children, of whom I travail again in prayer until Christ be formed you. Listen, we pay everything by prayer. Tomorrow, join us at the church. God bless you and keep you and strengthen you. We appreciate you. We love you. And thank you for praying with us. I'll see you again soon. God bless.